Hey everybody, welcome back to LinuxCast. I'm your host, Matt. I'm joined by Tyler as usual. How are you doing, Tyler? Doing good, mostly. You know, the uh, eye's better, so oh, I'm glad can't really complain. Glad your eye is better. Uh, it has been an interesting week, I think, for both of us. So, Tyler, why don't you tell us what you've been doing in Linux this week? Well, um, in Linux, uh, I've, well, for one, just been struggling to look at my computer. <laughs> Thankfully, backlight settings are, you know, an option, and right. you can crank those bad boys real low. So, I've been able to manage, but I've been using Rat Poison uh, as my tiling window manager. And here's the even more insane part. I've really, really liked it. It's actually good. Needs a better name. <laughs> it's a stupid Completely name. Completely agree. I mean, try telling people that you use rat poison. Um, that <laughs> it's, doesn't it, it go over It sounds like you're wrong. on some new designer drug or something. Isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> that, well, I mean, the kids these days, they snort Tide Pods and all that shit. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah. it could just be rat poison. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yep. I could just be huffing raid or something. <laughs> what what's the what's the name of the the um the exterminator company? What's the um the, the Oh um oh. This is dumb. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I know what you're talking about. I can't remember their name either. I know their logo. Yeah, I can say the logo too. I can't remember the name. It doesn't matter. Um I just uh, anyway, uh so tell me what the sh- the the idea behind rat poison is. What's what makes it different from like you know DWM or BSPWM or whatever? It, essentially, like it, it's not like other tiling window managers where you're going to be like. Even though DWM doesn't come with like you know gaps and borders and stuff, almost every single person out there patches it with at least some decorative border or something like that. You spruce up the panel, you know, you do something. Um, inside of Rat Poison, there is none of that. There is no panel. Um, you're not really meant to add a panel. I mean, I assume you can, because uh, a common misconception too in Rat Poison, it doesn't come with workspaces out of the gate. And the way it uses Windows, like, you split up your screen into frames, and each frame is not just the window that you've opened up. It's uh, every window you open up will take up the full screen inside of that frame. And so you you can cycle through windows. It's, it's very different, but you can have workspaces and stuff, but there's no panel, and there's really no reason to have stuff like that. Like, there's a shortcut for popping up the date and time and... You, you can create more of those types of pop-ups for different things if you wanted it. Like, if you want to check your battery percentage and stuff. Yeah. Um, you lost it's just when a, you said no workspaces. I mean, like... <laughs> well, again, out of the gate. The common misconception is that they're, like, they're not supported just because the config file, for one, when you install Rat Poison, there is no default config uh, because your config... Like, I have a bloated config and mine's like 12 lines. Like... Configuring your rat so poison it, it is super simple. It takes suckless to a whole new extreme. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. Like rat poison is actually, in my opinion, is way more suckless than actual suckless software. Yeah. It is crazy. Mm. I don't know if that sounds interesting or horrible. Uh- <laughs> yeah, you might try it, and like it, it's one of those things where you'll either try it and really like it, or you'll try it and instantly walk away. Mm. Yeah. All right. I don't know if I'll ever be brave enough to try it. So, obviously, uh, most of my week has been spent bash scripting. Uh, we'll talk more about when we get to it, but we're doing the bash challenge today, so it should be very interesting. But uh, mo- that's been most of my week. But other than that, I've transitioned back to QWERTY. I made a video about that. Uh, and I'm happy that I'm back at QWERTY because my key bindings are back where they're supposed to be. Uh, but I kind of miss- should be happy to be back. Yeah, okay. I, I kind of miss QWERTY or Colmac. I kind of do uh, because, you know, when I type, I was actually getting used to the, the all the, you know, common keys in the center place. So uh, there's a chance that someday, like when I'm on a vacation and like, uh, I'm not going to make any videos, I'm not going to do a podcast, I'm not going to do any of my, you know, actual job, uh, and I'm not going to do any typing for anything else, I'll just sit there, I'll, I'll put on Colmac and... I'll sit there for eight hours a day just doing typing tests until I get used to the damn thing. Uh, but 
that's not going to happen for a while. So, but th- I do miss it a little bit. And so, and the comments on that video were very uh, uh, complimentary towards Colmac DH, which is like a mod of Colmac, and supposedly that's way better. So I might give that a try. Um, I, I did I, see one comment that sort of talked about how, like, I mean, the benefit of switching to something other than QWERTY is like the improvement that you're going to get is like very small. Do you, would you disagree with that? Like, did you? I didn't stick with it long enough to know, but I I have a feeling that if I stuck with it for long enough, I'd probably get to the exact same speed as QWERTY. But the it, it, it's almost a hundred percent true that no matter what keyboard layout you switch to you're probably not going to be faster than you are with qwerty you don't switch to a different keyboard layout to get faster you get you switch to a different keyboard layout in order to uh you know either be more happy with where the keys are placed or for uh ergonomic you know reasons and um i've also been told that it would just be better just to get an ergonomic keyboard than actually switch two things and i've also heard good things about ortholinear keyboards the ones where all the rows are straight um yeah the problem with that is i i I looked at one like on amazon it's so expensive man dude the like one of the ones that i've looked at is the plank plank ortholinear one yeah and that one even like trying to get it wholesale like on drop or something like that it's gonna cost like 114 bucks those things are not Cheap. Yeah, and you still have to buy the key, uh, the key, the key switches, and the key caps. So, and, th- and mm-hmm. those things can add up, you know, pr- quite quick. I mean, it's stupid to complain about pricing because I'm a keyboard enthusiast. I collect keyboards, so I the one I'm using here was 180 dollars. Mm-hmm. That include that include the key caps. Uh, the one that's sitting behind me on my desk was 149. <laughs> Hey, I have a wireless TKL 913 that I spent 200 and something dollars on, and I don't use it nearly as much as you should use a $200 keyboard, yeah. so we both don't have any right to complain, right. but still, it's a lot of money. I was looking at that Moonla- Moonlander or whatever one, the one that is. Oh that my god, yeah. And that's like $400, uh-huh. but oh man, I kind of want one. But the thing is, is I have like a keyboard tray where my keyboard has to sit out, so I don't know how well... A, a split keyboard would work here because I also have to have room for my mouse. Uh, so, I don't know. Luckily, with the way my desk is, the standing desk, I have room for that, but, I mean, and I really like a split keyboard. I know I'd really enjoy the hell out of it, but almost $400 for any input device is whew, that is hard to swallow. Yeah. Some someday, I I desperately need a third monitor before I go buying another keyboard. <laughs> like I so need a new a third monitor, and I have it picked out, and I have the because I'm gonna have to redo my whole. I, I've never shared a setup a, a picture of my setup, but basically I have two 27 inch monitors in front of me, and my oh, computer nice. sits behind it, right? And I have this stupid 30 year old oak desk from like <laughs> Oak Express, and it's not wide enough for a third monitor. So what I'm gonna have to do is take the hutch off because it has like a like a wooden hutch where it has like books a bookshelf or whatever i'm gonna take that off and throw it away or whatever and then i'm gonna get two like monitor arms that will go onto the wall uh, one for dual so we'll do my two 27 inch monitors which they'll have to have adopters because they don't have vase amounts uh, and then i'm gonna get like a 32 inch monitor to go above them mm-hmm. and that's the plan like i have I have all the stuff saved to my Amazon list. I'm going to buy it eventually. I just haven't, mm-hmm. like, I, I even have the money for it. It's just the fact that I'm going to have to go through and move all the shit in order to yeah. do it. Um, and it's one of those things where you're excited for it. Like, you, you're excited to get it and stuff, but you know as soon as you get it, there's so much set up in it. Like, my problem is, is I normally will negate, like, going and getting all of this crap here. I was really excited to go get it. And then when I got home, I'm like, okay, I've already spent like half the day getting this stuff. I'm going to be up till like one o'clock putting it all up. And if you've got monitors and stuff, the rearranging stands, doing all of that stuff, moving your desk so that you can get back there and plug everything in. Like it is a hassle. Yeah. And it's even worse in my case. Cause like I said, this desk is about 30 years old and one of the legs is not so stable. And it weighs about 800 pounds. I shit you not. And 
like I can't move this desk one more time. Like the last time I moved it, we knew it was the last time it was going to ever get moved because that lev is going to fall off the next time it gets moved. Like we know mm-hmm. it's going to happen. It's so bad when I get enthusiastic with typing, the whole fucking monitor shakes like it, like it's bad, right? And like I have a thousand dollar computer on here, I really don't want it to fall down uh, like, I don't think it's going to end up being that bad but I, I I love a new desk I just don't have room for it not really I mean I could get rid of that standing desk back there behind me I use that fairly frequently but I could go through and just get uh, a single desk that actually goes up and down and, you know like a like I think yours goes up up and down yeah right? yep, mine's a standing desk I w- because I had this 800 pound desk and I have no place to put it I just got a second desk. That one there doesn't go up and down. It's just a standing desk. Ah, yeah. okay. So, <laughs> my setup is jank AF, as they say. <laughs> it's just so stupid. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the other thing I did this week was I worked some, reworked some key bindings after my transition from Colmac back to QWERTY. And I'm really liking because before all my... like. I, I think I've talked about this before, but I use scratch pads like crazy, like mm-hmm. all the time. I'm like, I went to BSPWM for a little while because I'm using it back there on Debian, and mm-hmm. it does not have scratch pads. And oh my god, I miss it. I miss it like an arm. Like I use them <laughs> all the time. I I have. Let's see if I can do this without actually doing it. Uh, I probably better not do that with that ter- that that terminal thing that I was doing. I was gonna go through and actually open them, but I think I better just not touch anything because we just spent a half an hour trying to set this shit up. Uh, but anyways, I have uh, Neomut, I have Git Kraken, I have Pulse Mixer, I have two terminals, I have Bitwarden, um, and a couple other things, all tied to scratch pads and key bindings. And they were all over the keyboard before. There were it was P O U Y N M before. This time, I have them all on V, B, N, and M, and then I have, like, a shift modifier to get to a couple, you know, the other four. Mm-hmm. So, it's just, so oh, man, it's so much better. Uh, so, so, the Colmac experiment did net something. It did actually get me to go in and clean up my DWM config a little bit. So, anyways, that, that's what I've been that's doing. That's always good, you know? Yeah. When you go in, you just clean up a config, and it looks nicer. You're like, ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it does. It, it def- I, didn't, I didn't actually go through and, like... I, I love going through like removing lines to like I went through my i3 config and if you've ever tried Arc Linux before their i3 configuration is 2,000 lines long. It's like <laughs> horrendously what? long. It's not actually 2,000 lines long. That that's their polybar config. Their polybar config <laughs> is 2,000 lines long. I shit you not. Uh, that's because they use the same polybar config for 22 different mo- uh, desk window managers. <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's dumb. Jesus. Um, but their i3 config is like, I don't know, like a eight, seven or 800 words long, long, lines long. And I went through one time and took out all the key bindings and got it to 97, word, 97 lines long. And I was so proud of myself. Because <laughs> I moved everything to SXHKD. So, anyways. All right. Uh, so... Uh, to get, if you would like to get in contact with us, you can do so. You can follow me, us on Twitter at the LinuxCast, where I tweet about a whole bunch of Linux stuff. Uh, you can subscribe to all of our audio feeds and stuff like that at the LinuxCast.org. And I also said, all right, here's something else I did this week. I sat down and I planned out the website that I've been promising forever. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, it's not done yet. It's not up yet. <laughs> so this could still be many moons away. But <laughs> it's one step closer because uh, you inspired me with the um, the Gemini capsule you were talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've, what I've decided to do is something like what Hex DSL has done is we'll do a Gemini, Gemini capsule. And then I'll write a script to push that up into like a GitHub page. So I don't actually mm-hmm. have to pay for anything. And that will be our website. And... That's gonna that will happen eventually, uh, but anyway, I'm excited, so, man. That's awesome. Yeah, it's gonna be nice. The LinuxCast.org it, uh, is where you can find all of our uh, audio feeds and stuff like that. If you want to get in contact via email, email at the LinuxCast.org. You can support us on Patreon at Patreon.com/LinuxCast. You can find Tyler, who goes by Zany on the internet, with the links in the video description. I don't say those links because they're you know fugly links. <laughs> uh, but they are in the video description. They'll also be in the audio description if you listen to this on the audio, which a lot of people do. We appreciate every single one of you. And you, subs- you can subscribe to the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash linuxcast. Um, so, technically, this is episode 51. 
I, I know last week I said it was going to be episode 50, but I, I miscounted it. It's episode 51. We pushed this back because Matt's a procrastinating stupid asshole. Um, <laughs> it's no. <true. laughs> no, really, we pushed it back because I didn't even have an idea yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Hey, hey. Now, my idea... My, I might have had an idea, but some will, I'm sure, will argue in the comments or just getting back to us on this video that my idea could have also used the extra time to get better. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, as long as you use that time, you know, well, I'm, and I'm sure you did. I definitely did because, like I said, I didn't come with, with I, I, so I had four or five ideas um, before this, like, but I couldn't decide between them. And some of them were just the stupidest thing ever. Uh, the one that I really, really liked and I really, really wanted to do was a, a, a movie uh, management script where we'd go through, rename a file for the movie, save a file with like a comma separated value list where it had the title, like genre and art, um, you know, actors or whatever. And then eventually I could go through with another programming language and create some kind of TUI that would allow me to search through my music library or my movie library. And then uh, like play music and or movies and uh, search through them, but that was way too ambitious. <laughs> just, I was, was about just, to say, I was like, it, that sounds just a little wee bit complex. <laughs> it was just way too ambitious, and, and the bash part of it would have been such a minuscule project uh, because the rest of it would have had it been done in something like Python or Rust or something like that. And I don't know any Python or any Rust, <laughs> so. Uh, I figured a project that was like a precursor to something else wasn't going to do all that great. So, like I said, I just started on Sunday with this uh, idea. So, you're probably wondering what we're talking about. If you're watching on YouTube, you're about to see some awesomeness. If you're wa if you're listening through audio, uh, stop now. Go to YouTube and watch this. Uh, I will try. <laughs> I will try my best to go through the lines of code that we're about to, about to talk about, so that the audio listeners can at least kind of. Uh, imagine what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll do my best. Uh, if not, you can go to the, like I said, you go to YouTube. There'll be a timestamp. You can just watch this part here. You don't have to watch it all. Um, so, neither one of us, I mean, there have been glimpses of my script today while we were setting up, but I don't, you don't know what I'm doing yet. You don't, no, you know? no. And I have and, no. And I also, the script that was loaded up on the screen, I, even though I saw it, I wasn't reading any of it because I didn't know if it was your script or if it was something like, T to be honest, the way that the setup was going, I didn't know if it was something that I really shouldn't even be seeing in the first place. So I was like, yeah, I should read it. <laughs> Only one of us here here has shared a password on on a stream recently. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, not not as bad as me sharing my address that one time. It was <laughs> it actually it wasn't my whole address. It was just the zip code, but it was still bad enough. I had to pull that video. Well, you're still assuming that I haven't doxed myself <laughs> in streams before, too. Anyways, all right. So, our task, I should actually go through and see if I can find the rules. Oh, yes. I, so I'm I, sure some people aren't familiar with them. Yeah, so, this is the Bash Challenge. And where the hell are the rules? I, I know you sent them to me in Telegram. I did. So all right. So, here are the rules. And... It must be pure bash. We changed that uh, so it doesn't actually have to be pure bash, but I think we said that it has to be as close to bash as possible. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we kind of shied away from using things like awk, grip, and, and set. So another thing, it has to, I'm, and I'm really glad this I, I worded it this way, it has to be useful or cool or both. Um, <laughs> if I had just said cool, I would have lost. <laughs> I'll just say it for a guarantee. Um and also, if it was just useful, I'm pretty sure I would have lost. So. <laughs> right. So I'm glad we said it was useful or cool. And the third one is we couldn't tell each other what we were working on. Now, we, both of us have become perilously close to breaking this rule. Tyler's <laughs> been streaming every night for like the last three or four days, and he's talked about his script in vague terms. Like, he's come very close to breaking this rule a couple times. I have danced on that line like crazy. <laughs> All right, and uh, yeah, so no, and the fourth and final rule was that it had to be something new. It could not be something that we've written before. Now, what we did not say was that it couldn't be based on someone else's pro work. So uh, that was a little bit of a, a loophole. I don't know whether or not you actually discovered that loophole or not, because I certainly did. Uh, <laughs> although I don't, I didn't actually look at anybody else's code. I just know that what mine, 
script does, other people have done as well. Um, mm -hmm. And probably done way better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, this is the Bash Challenge. And we plan on doing this at least every 50 episodes. And if this still goes well, maybe we'll do every 25 episodes. And we don't it won't always be a Bash Challenge. It'll be some kind of challenge where we kind of go head-to-head -head in some kind of, uh, you know, whatever. So without further ado, Tyler... You get to go first. <laughs> oh gosh! <laughs> <'Cause>, uh, <laughs> I don't like this. I I okay. So before we do this, I have done a magnificent job of lowering expectations for my script. Uh, so much so that I have been messing with Tyler's head the whole time. Or so he, much. He thinks I have because I really haven't. I mean, there was no like uh, nefarious, you know. Uh, evilness to my plan it just kind of worked out that way <laughs> so uh tyler uh let me see if i can find uh, your script here while we're going uh let me sh um so we're gonna do have to do a little bit in podcast setup here we've tried to do our absolute best to try to get this to actually work um without having to go through and actually set it all up you know right here so first i need to share the screen so that tyler can see okay so we do that and then we have to go through and change to a different scene here in obs so that everybody else can see so tyler you can see my screen yeah oh yeah okay and we'll I'll, i will zoom in here in alacrity so that everybody can see and we're going to go into the Bash Challenge folder. And if we do an LS here, we have our scripts. Now, there's also another file in here that had my like idea thing in here. So um, I'm going to open up your script now, and then you're going to tell me what you did. So All right. Hide and Seek is the name of the folder. Uh, it's definitely prettier than mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so well, what is this? So mine is... Uh, so it's called Hide and Seek, and it's a little Hide and Seek... Uh, I, I do use, it's not straight pure bash through it, but it's almost all bash. Um, if, if not pretty damn close to all bash. Um, and it's a little hide and seek game. And, uh, so the first, first little bit of it here is just printing out, um, how it works. And, uh. Uh, also sort of the options that you get. So it explains uh, you're going to choose your difficulty level. Uh, and then uh, if you check the directory that you ran this in, uh, after you, of course, after you've chosen the difficulty level, you'll find a folder called hide and seek. And as soon as you move into it uh, or move into it, based on your difficulty, there will be anywhere from 25 to 100 files inside this directory. Uh, find the file that contains hide in them. So you're essentially playing hide and seek uh, with your own Okay, you know, so it, on your own, it like creates the directory after you run the script, right? Um, uh, well, so or there is an option for quitting with, and if you just quit out of it, it it won't make the directory. It won't create anything. Uh, I I, I want to do that just because I know there's going to be someone who runs it and is like, I don't trust this one bit. And if you actually choose quit, I didn't want you to find cruft on your fold or on your hard drive. So okay. Um, yeah, um, so, you, it, so I'm going. I'm going up and down this. And why don't you, so you let's? What, what should we do first? Should we go ahead and run it, and then go back through and talk about the line? You know, go through the, you know line by line or whatever, and you can tell us how you did what you did, or should we do go through and um, you can tell us what you did, and then we'll run it. Which would you rather prefer? Uh, let's go ahead and run it, and, okay. and then I'll go back through and explain it. Okay, so I need to make this uh, executable. Otherwise, it won't work. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so we're going to do dot slash hide and seek. Okay, here we go. All right, so... And of course, it's cut off the top here. Because it, 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 <laughs> it, it, it is, but that's mostly because I'm zoomed in so far. If I zoomed out here quite a bit... Yeah, there we go. Um, can you still read that or should I use zoom back oh, yeah. in? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I apologize if you can't read, you, you know, watchers read this. So let's, so, uh, for the audio listeners, we're doing a horrible job of actually doing this. <laughs> I promise that we're going to try to do this, uh, better for the audio listeners. I do apologize. 
Um, so on the screen, what I'm looking at is uh, a hide and seek like ASCII art thing with the words hide and seek. It says how it works. Choose your difficulty level. If you check the directory you ran this in, you'll you'll find a folder named hide and seek. Move into it. Based on your difficulty level, there'll be anywhere between 25 and 100 files. This sounds like a, a thing to fill up my hard drive. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> based on your difficulty level, there will be anywhere from 25 to 100 files inside this directory. Now find the files that contain hider in them. Okay. So, uh, you said on the stream last night you wanted me to check hard. So, <laughs> all right. All right. Was it supposed to stop? Yes. All right. So, so it, sp it spits you so out. If we do an LS here, we got some a folder here. Okay. So if we go into the hide and seek folder, all right, all right. can I go ahead and clear the screen now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if we do an LS, I'm in the hide and seek folder now. Holy shit. <laughs> um. So I'm supposed to find one of the so these. There's like. Somewhere within these hundred files, there's eight of them that have. Yes. Uh, oh, and so f for the audio listeners, again, we're trying here. Um, <laughs> the, so the diff it, it, after it explains uh, the first bit there, it, it also says enter your difficulty, and it has um, options for um, e being easy and easy. There is two files that have hi there's it, well, it says two hiders, but there's two files that have hider in them. Um, N is for normal difficulty. That one has four, and hard has eight. Um, so you have eight files in here that have hider in them, and the goal is to find which ones that do have hider in them. Okay, so what uh, is in the other ones? Are they all the ones empty? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So before I go through and start searching, I guess one by one, I don't even, <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, uh, before I start saying, it feels to me like two would have been harder than eight because there are fewer. Uh, therefore, mm -hmm. you'd it's easier to find eight needles in a haystack than there is to find two. So I'm very curious how you went through and saw this. Not that it's not going to be hard with eight, two because there's a hundred <laughs> files here. Now, I was about to say, <laughs> I mean, we could, I could have made the difficulty level that insane, but I figured at least if you're playing on hard difficulty, it's nice to feel like you're winning <laughs> at some point. Right. So, and so I'm, I'm the trying... point of this game is. But... It is not just to find them, but also, are you good at, like, because there are different ways that you could go about finding uh, <laughs> the file, uh, which files have hider in them faster. Uh, but what also a thing that I did to make it even more difficult is uh, for, again, those people who are just listening and can't see, the files have um, a not necessarily an easy naming scheme. Uh, they're all starting off their file 001.00 and they all go up incrementally from there. So the file 002 is .001. So it's not exactly like you can just go through there and like recursively go up and up making it a really yeah. easy. Um, so I, I was, while you're talking, I was thinking about how I would go about doing it and um, <laughs> that's really, it is quite a, a hard thing to do. Um, I'm sure that if I was more proficient with the command line, that there's a way to go through and like use the find command to go through and find uh, those files. But I don't know enough about find because I always use locate to find files. <laughs> Cause just, yeah. right? Because locate is better than find for what it does just to search for files because it searches more. Um... So, I think, friends, that we're going to pet a cat. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, let's see, just randomly. Uh, we're going to choose 30. Right off the bat, dude. dude. Right off the bat. That's where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> right off the bat. You can't, you couldn't even have met. I, I, so let me ask you this. Is this random every time? So if I played this again after deleting the the, the thing, is it a random thing or, or is Hider in the same file every single time? It's random. Or as random as you could probably make it. Which yeah, is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Mm. All right, so there's one. <laughs> we don't have to go through and play the whole game because I don't know how long it would take to find eight of these if we're going right. to cat out every file. So we're going to try 068. 068 was empty. Okay, so uh, we're going to try 0... Uh, let's see, 20. 20 was empty. This is just really random, man. <laughs> yep. Okay, um, let's try. Let's try go back all the way all the way up to one hundred. One hundred was empty. There has to be like a, a a better way to do this. I'm sure there is. Now let me let me think about it. All right, so we've seen the way I would do it. How would you go about finding it? I'm just asking. Um, well, for me, I I honestly can't remember the command off of uh, off the top of my head, but I did find a good way of going through it. That was dang now i can't remember the com man i i can't remember there is a command uh that i found that you, you can go through and search the files um dang i can't remember uh i think it was using the find command i found i should have had it saved <laughs> like, did, you see what I, did you just see what i just did i found all eight of them but it doesn't tell me what file they were in <laughs> 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 I just I just did cat star. <laughs> you know, I just found all of them. Uh, uh, <laughs> that obviously is 100% cheating. Uh, <laughs> I mean, technically, you just won the game. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did it, but the game didn't say I had to know which files they're in, just that I had to find them. So, True. <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you didn't see that one coming, did you? <laughs> no, I did not. Uh, okay. Um, I didn't. First of all, I didn't even know cat would work that way. And neither did I. I had, I had no clue that cat would work that way. All right. All right. So let's go back to your script here and go through it line by line. So we'll we'll CD back up a level. Oops, I did it wrong. I do know how to use the, the terminal, <laughs> trust me. And we'll vim into hide and seek. And so at the beginning, you just printed out the, the screen we saw. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we have a while loop. So what does this while loop do? This is the whole script is the while loop, right? Yep. It, like, I try, I mean, I had it way more as people would like to call it bloated than it is now uh, before, but I've, I've gotten it down pretty, pretty basic. So it's, okay. it's just a while loop that's going and it's, it's taking in the, the value for difficulty. Okay. Um, and so then hmm? it reads the difficulty and uh, then it creates the directory of hide and seek. Well, okay. um, so f first off, there's the, there's the case statement there. So we're going to read for a uh, different input and I have it for, E or if you do a capital, you know, right. one, it'll still work. Um, but it's going to create, as soon as you choose your difficulty, it's going to yep, create the directory. Um, and then it's going to CD into it. And then it's going to, it's going to run this touch command that uh, paste. Uh, and then it's going to do the print F so that you get the randomized file. And I'm doing the file like um Z, uh, zero zero dot or zero zero one to twenty five. So you're going to end up with so that's uh, the easy one. Yeah. So you're going to end up with uh, twenty five files um, with th that being the name, and then it print it, another printf is running for the um, after the dot, uh, so that you get you know uh, a more randomized ending to it too. So zero through twenty four for that. Okay, and then um, and then we have a n equals two here. Yep, and that is for the, um, well, if I can remember, oh yeah, that's for the n number of hiders. I almost forgot that. Oh, okay, you know, yeah. you, When you're naming variables, it's it's always better to name them something that, you know, makes sense, not just a letter. Just letting yeah. you guys know that. Well, put, 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 put some comments in here, man. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great, too. <laughs> okay, and then we have uh, an LS and a sort and a tail and some stuff here. So what's, what's this stuff about? Um, so this we're going to... This is actually out. doing the hiding, right? Uh, yes, it, it, this right here is putting in the hiders um, for you, and it's uh, it's it's listing out the because we CD'd into the directory hide and seek, and we've made the files, so now it's going to list them out randomly, sort them, and then we're going to use tail to get you know the f the first two or the randomized first two files there, and then um, while we're 
while we have that, we're going to echo Hider into that into those files, and and then we um, and then and then it just move, then it just does the same thing, but for the higher difficulties, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. And then uh, it ends itself off down there at the bottom with just uh, for the quit command, you're just going to exit the script, and it literally does nothing. So okay. again, very simple script. Yeah. Um. So I'm trying to think. So. Our friend Terminal for Life is going to take these scripts and critique them. I'm trying to find places where he's going to critique this. And uh, I don't know whether or not these counts as, count as subshells or not. Uh, but I would say that's, maybe that's something where he's going to comment. Uh, yeah. But uh, overall, this is really quite good because I don't know anything. I know Before we did this challenge, I knew very little about while, while loops. I'd never used mm-hmm. one before. And I, when I created my script, I actually had to look up how they worked. So uh, this is very this while loop is much more complicated than the while loop that's going to be in my script. Uh, so I'm very impressed with the randomization of the numbers and placing the hiders in different files. That's really cool. Thank um, you. Yeah. So I, <laughs> if I hadn't found my workaround, I'd probably still be sitting here trying to find those damn fifth fuckers. <laughs> but because because I'm a big fat cheater. <laughs> I found them all very quickly. Um, found them extremely fast. Um, you would have, you'd want to have to have an honest player to say, to have a rule that says you can't use that particular, you know, uh, mechanism to get around it. Cause you have to say, Hey, you want to, not only do you have to know, so you can do this with my script, how, how you would improve it. So if there was a way for you to stay inside the running script to go through and find those files, that way the, the game is still technically running. And then in order for you to win the game, you have to tell the script what files have the hiders in them. That way it knows Ooh. that you didn't just go through and cat the whole thing out. You actually have to enter the file name into the script in order to... T- tell it that you, that's where the hider is and it goes through and actually checks where the hider is that i cool. like that yeah um, i don't know whether or not you could do that with bash or not but that'd be a that'd be a challenge for a version two a version 2.0 oh yeah um oh, i like that 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 is a that's a good recommendation I, I like it really cool all right so that was your script uh very impressive um, you got me nervous. I am. I am just. If I was sitting down, I'd be on the edge of my seat waiting to see yours. <laughs> All right. So I did not go with a game. I thought about like a text-based text-based adventure game, or you know, like Oregon Trail or something. <laughs> like mm-hmm. when we first decided we we're going to do this, I had wild ambitions. Right, <laughs> I, like some of the things I was thinking, like I'm these these games are going to be so cool, or the script is going to be awesome, and it's going to be huge, and it's going to be do so much. Uh, and then as I continued to procrastinate, the ideas continued to get smaller and smaller and smaller, which they had to for strips. So uh, mine, if we see it, if we vim into mine, so MMDTS, um, mine is called, If uh, let me go to the top here, it's called the My Dots to Repo Converter. So mine is not cool, but it is, I think, useful. So when you want to manage a github dot files thing you can do it in any number of ways some people just decide to create a dot files or a, a git repository of their just whole dot config file mm-hmm. uh, not the greatest way of doing it because there's a lot of stuff in there you probably don't want to share uh, alternatively you can just copy the dots you want to share into another re- repo and then always update those through a, a you know every once in a while go through and copy the one files into the other files and then do your whole get up, pull and push and stuff and stuff like that. So you can do it that way. Uh, the way a lot of people do it is through symbolic links. Uh, so what my script does is it goes through right now for Alacrity, BSPWM, i3, and Awesome Window Manager. It will go through into your config, .config folder. It will move those files from .config into a repo like move them and then it will create symbolic links from that repo back into your configuration file so that you can go through and just create your git repo in that one folder and upload that to github and 
it, that way you can make all your changes in that folder and your your config like your window managers or whatever will pull from the sim links so that all of your updated your updates are all done within the same folder and you can just whenever you make a change push it up to github and cool yeah so there are many other programs that do this and i'm sure like i said much better so uh I'm a little worried about running this on stream because, like I said, this does move actual configuration files out of your config folder into another folder. So the configuration files are no longer in your configuration file for a little bit. And if it fails, you know, whatever. So I'm going to. I like how we were considering just exchanging scripts <laughs> and running them on. <laughs> the, the thing is, is it wouldn't have worked because you probably don't have BSPWM i3 or Awesome Window Manager on your machine, right? Don't have any of them. So I do. I have, I have everything. <laughs> All right. So you ran yours before we went through. I'm going to go through mine before I run it. I, I will run it on camera. I promise. Mm -hmm. It probably won't work because. It worked last night, but <laughs> I'm sure someone's <laughs> gotten here. So the first thing I do is I define the repo. So it always creates your my repo in your home directory. Originally, I went through and had it ask for user input. Where would you like your repo? But that was messy because it had to use a, uh, an absolute path in order to actually work. And like I said, it was messy. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it just defines a couple colors so that I can. And I use those colors here right away in a warning. So. If you're listening through on audio, here's what the warning says. Warning, this script will move directories from your .config directory into a directory. If I could use directories one more time in the sentence, I'm going to shoot somebody. Uh, <laughs> into a directory called my repo in your home directory. That's four uses of the word directory in one sentence. Awesome. Uh, I didn't even notice that. Uh, it does attempt to make a backup. The backup file will be located in your home directory if it is needed. And then, and then we use the read command. It says, are you sure you'd like to continue? Yes or no. And this is where I get to use a, a, a case input. So I use uh, w whether the input for that is uh, yes or no or something else. And it does all the whole case sensitive things for yes or no. Mm -hmm. And then it, well, all, all it does is just continue on. If they hit yes, no, it exits out. So after that, I check and make sure that a .config file exists. Because if the .config file doesn't exist, the whole script is pointless and, you know, it just, you know, it wouldn't work. So if, if it exists, it will continue and just print out something like the .config file exists. And then if it doesn't, it will exit. And then what it does, it, it will check and see if the my repo uh, th directory exists. If it doesn't, it creates it. If not, it just prints out already exists. Um... And then now, I'm, I, I, I don't mean to critique too much, but I would say if the check if config file doesn't exist, uh, maybe a, a warning there letting uh, the person know that like the scripts like it's not complete. It's just ended mm -hmm. would be good there. Yeah, but I could echo, again, out, echo out something like that. That'd be easy enough. Um, yeah, like say why it exited out. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, and then after that, it, this is where it creates the .config backup. So this will back up your entire .config folder. Um, and yes, that could take up a lot of disk space, and it might take a little while on longer or on less powerful machines. But originally, I wasn't going to do the, the config backup at all. But I realized mm -hmm. that if, because when you move files, sometimes things mess up. Either they don't get transferred or something. And this happened to me, so I wanted to make sure that it, in the process of this, if something went wrong, people could get their whole .config file just back completely. Mm -hmm. So that's what this does. It it, it just it says if .config exists, then it goes through and it copies the .config into a, a .config backup file that has is is a a date stamped. So it uses date in order to create a date stamp all the way down to the exact second the, the file was created um and then if it uh, um if the dot config file doesn't exist it just echoes out where's your dot config file you hooligan um that part had me laugh i was like right hooligan. <laughs> um and then all of all that this does is for sp the specific window managers that i've chosen in alacrity is if dot config slash bspwm ex exists then 
it moves that file, that directory, into the repo folder, and then it links the that directory that it moved back into .config, and then it moves on. That's all it does. Uh, and that way, when you go through and make changes in the repo, the .config stays up to date all the time, and you don't have to go through and create multiple repositories for every single window manager. All you have to do is go through and create that one repository and upload that to Git, and it's all of your window manager, you know, config files. I, and right now, I, like I said, I have BSPWM, i3, Awesome, and Alacrity. It would be very easy to go through and, you know, like add your own to this. All you have to do is cop, you know, yank this block of text, paste it in, and then change the word Alacrity to whatever's in your .config file that you'd like to add to your repo. That's all it would do. Uh, if I were smarter with Bash, I would go through and make it that kind of automated so people could go through and, like, say, I want to add these things to my uh, repo. Uh, Herb Sluft, uh, uh, Kitty, or whatever, and they could just have an input of those file names, and it would go through and, you know, add that to, like, one block of text and do it over and over again until it ran through all of the ones that the user inputted, but I, I didn't you know do that and then all of it the ends on a print f where it says if the script succeeded delete the backup of your config file as it does take up a lot of hard drive space uh, <laughs> all that's left to do then is to create your git repo and get in it and that is the script um i mean that that is a uh much more useful script than mine uh, i don't think there will be any contest <laughs> there you went cool, I went useful. Um, mm -hmm. But there's nothing wrong with that because I think we can all agree that between the two of us, you got the cool thing going on <laughs> way more than I do. <laughs> all right, so uh, just to show that this works, um, I'm going to actually go into my home directory and do an ls here. And we can see that there's not a folder here called my repo. All it's, The only directories I have that aren't hidden are desktop downloads media and virtual box window managers okay so if we go back into downloads here and the bash challenge and run this uh, it's going to ask give me my warning I'm gonna hit yes and then it's done okay so if I go back into my home director here and we'll clear this so people can see and do an LS we now have a my repo directory so if we seed into my repo and do ls i have folders alacrity awesome bsbwm and i3 and if we cd oh and we can also look up here and see that it created a dot config backup folder and if we go into my dot config file and clear this and do it on ls we can see that alacrity awesome bsbwm and i3 are all symbolic links so that uh, any changes I make in that other folder will automatically be here and i3 bspwm awesome and alacrity all will just continue to run just like normal but you have one file that you can manage all your stuff in and also create that into a git repository so that you can upload all those all in one you know one swap fell swoop in order to uh, you know upload to git yeah. that's it that's my script. So, critique. Uh, much more useful than mine. Um, the Again, the only thing that I, I see, uh, again, I think both of us are basing any critiques off what we assume that Terminal for Life is going to point, point out. <laughs> and I think the only thing that I really see in, in your script there, because, I mean, the... It, Again, it's much more useful to mine. Is just the fact that it it, it, it exit exits without um, you know letting uh, the user know like uh, like hey we're we're exiting because your config file doesn't exist or your dot config folder doesn't exist. Um, I mean, I, I could cheat again. and go through and change that right now. It would take forever. exactly <laughs> like I mean that that's one of the smallest gripes ever. You could right. fix that in. I mean, how long does it take to, to write an echo command? Like <laughs> yeah. four seconds. Um, if I had to look and see what he's probably going to critique, it's at least at first he's going to critique this long ass printf command and the new line thing. I'm not sure if that was the proper way to do that, and it's not formatted very nicely. 
Um, and I, I don't, I don't know about that because if a long print F command is something he's going to critique, then, uh, my script <laughs> starts off with a extremely long print F command. Yeah. Yours was pretty though. Mine is all weird. Uh, I couldn't, because printf doesn't have a functionality for actually like, uh, like centering or something like that. Because I, 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 what I wanted to do was like center the printf, but you can't actually do that. There is like a width thing that you could do for like the width of it, um, but it ended up being beyond me. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's my script and that's your script. Uh, so uh, let me go through and get us back to our side by side scene here. Which, in order to do that, I need to stop sharing the screen. Um, and then go back to OBS here and switch back to the main, past, the main split scene. Alright, so... Yeah. For those of you who are watching on YouTube, you had a much better experience with what we just did than if you listened to audio. So I do apologize for that. Uh, I do encourage you to go to YouTube.com slash LinuxCast where this video will be up. And... Um, actually see these scripts in action for yourself we tried to go through and, and explain what we're talking about but it's kind of hard to remember when we're looking at through at each other through video that there mm -hmm. are also people who just listen to the audio so yeah uh, i do apologize for that now this was a competition this was a this was a challenge that was meant to be won by somebody uh, mm -hmm. uh on the community page as soon as this goes up for the public, it won't be for the patrons. Uh, the pa patrons will get this a day early, but for everybody else, when this goes up on YouTube around three o'clock on Friday, there will be a poll on the community tip, uh, page of the Linux Cast that has a poll where you can vote for my script or you can vote for Tyler's script. Uh, the winner gets bragging rights until the next challenge uh th there's no actual prize because <laughs> oh cheap bastard here uh, <laughs> Same. uh all right uh i, I have keyboards to buy <laughs> just saying mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh anyways um so vote for the script that you liked the most uh and obviously leave comments on that whether or not you, uh, how you liked it how you think they could be improved so on and so forth we will also, after this episode is done, upload these scripts to our GitHub repositories. I will leave links to mine. Now, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll probably put up on our both individual, because we both have repositories for this kind of stuff. So uh, we'll leave links to these scripts in the video description so you can go through and download these and use them if you want to. Uh, just caution if you use mine. <laughs> Make sure you remember that shit's going to get moved. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. I am not responsible if she gets moved and uh, erases itself. There's no RM in that that script, so it shouldn't remove anything. But sometimes stuff happens. Anyway, so whoever wins, like I said, will be an announced Sunday night on the stream. So you'll have mm -hmm. two days and a little bit of you know a little bit extra to vote. So we'll see. Who wins? May the best man win. You're winning. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, that was the best challenge. Ch Tyler, what do, what did you think of that so far? What did you think of that challenge? How do you think that you... Um, okay. I am way less confident after seeing yours just because your. I feel like people are going to vote uh, on the more useful side. Mm. Mine might be nifty and cool, but I don't think my mine is by no means useful unless you're like trying to learn how to find stuff in files. I guess that would be good practice. <laughs> yeah. But It'd be, it would be good practice to go through and try to find because I mean I'm sure that other than using cat, there are other ways of doing it, right? I mean there have to yeah. be. So. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I know there are other ways of doing it that actually w it will spit out the files that have the matching text in them. I just don't remember it, and also I'm not I'm not <laughs> like terminal not, for life where I know stuff. Yeah, in the you terminal don't you don't, you don't want to go through and spoil it. I mean, that'd be a waste of a game. True, true. Yeah, that that that's what we'll go with. That's why I don't know it off the top of my head. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, um, yeah. So I think it's going to be closer than you think it's going to be because there are going to be some people that are going to say well you know what Matt's script 
there's like six or seven or five thousand other scripts that do this exact same thing. Why did you create the same thing uh, that other people have created? So uh, that is definitely well, going to be a problem. With I mine. will go ahead and say this in your defense. To those people, look, there was nowhere in the rules that it had to be unique. Okay? Right. Well, I mean, no, no. It, it, this, this would have been a lot harder to do if we said it had to be unique. I'm glad, oh, we, yeah. didn't, I didn't, I'm glad we didn't have that rule. I will say... That I don't think anybody has done what I've done in the way that I did it. Um, because most people would have a more complex way of doing it instead of just a series of if commands. I mean, that's literally all I did was a series of if commands. Uh, there's like six if commands and a case, uh, you know, a case loop or whatever. And a couple reads. That's literally all it is. So it's not as if this is like the height of batch scripting. Uh, so Same with mine. I, I, think, I think that... W- the other programs that do this all do it in a way that's much more uh, customizable and has a lot more user input in order to tell, it, say, hey, upload these files into the repo or whatever. Um, so uh, it'll be interesting to see who wins. Uh, I, I'm I'm not confident one way or the other. I, I couldn't tell you. All right. So anyways, that is the badge challenge. So we do have picks of the week for you this week. So, Tyler, why don't you tell us what your pick of the week is? There's not going to be anything uh, on the screen to show this because I didn't have a chance to go through and actually put these in the browser. So, uh, just talk about it. Yeah. Well, m- mine's pretty much uh, one that most, like if, if you're a, already a Linux user and you're watching this, uh, just know you've probably already heard of my pick of the week, but it's... It's CMUS. It's a great, great terminal music player. I don't think I've actually really ever talked about it, but I know there's, when, when it comes to terminal music players, if you want to play music in the terminal, almost everyone knows either about CMUS or uses CMUS. Uh, it's a great music player. It's the key bindings for it make total sense. It's a it's the most simple thing to set up and use. Um, so if you if you want to play music inside of the terminal and you don't want a you know bloated graphic user interface for just pressing play on a song, CMOS is a is a great way of managing playing music. And also for some reason I don't know I I saw a Reddit forum or forum where people were going back and forth talking about how it's difficult to turn uh, the or change the volume in CMOS. If you're that person out there and you you don't know anything about CMOS, just know as soon as you have a song playing, the minus and plus buttons just turn up and turn down volume. Okay. That was the funniest Reddit for, for, for me to see because it was like eight people going back and forth talking about how it's impossible. And I'm like, what are you guys? <laughs> like, come on. It's, it's in the... T- read the man page like i hate to be that type of arch user who's like read the manual but like (laughs) i mean come on the most funny is for like the last minute your voice has been breaking out so i only heard about half of what you're saying uh no it's fine because the recording on in audacity should be Mm -hmm. fine but uh the funny thing is one of the parts where you dropped out is where you said the word fucking (laughs) like it was like (laughs) automatic bleeping it was awesome uh um (laughs) <laughs> so I've used CMUS before. I don't particularly care for how it looks, so I use the crazy NCMPCPP or whatever the fuck it's called. Uh, I've, no, I've never even heard of that. Uh, it, it's a front end for MPD. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So uh, the MPD server runs in the background and has all the music and playlists and stuff like that, and this is just a front end for it. It's really cool. It's more customizable, I think, than CMUS, but it's also harder to customize because you have to do MPD first. And MPD can be a schlog to actually get set up because, it, you know, it worries about ports and all this sorts of stuff. So definitely CMUS is better for, you know, you don't know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. All right. So mine is also a program that a lot of people have heard of. It's called Zathura. It's a PDF reader that is kind of meant for the suckless crowd. Uh, it's very much just a PDF reader. It has a lot of features, but they're very much bare buried in terms of uh, key bindings. You use key bindings to navigate through this thing. Uh, and it's a PDF reader. You know, it's for reading in PDFs. So it's, 
there's not a lot to say about it, but I found myself the last week or so having to go through and actually viewing some PDFs because I've been trying to learn some stuff about like printf. Like last night, for example, <laughs> uh, I wanted to know more about printf because I wanted to see if I could go through and add some extra lines without having to go slash n slash n slash n. You know, mm-hmm. uh, and I found a PDF of a doctor. I think it was like a doctoral thesis on print F. I was like, first of all, nerd. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, <laughs> I mean, could you, if you write your doctoral thesis on print F, you win the nerd card. I mean, like you have the the biggest nerd card. Of all the nerds. Could uh, you imagine being a professor and getting a thesis, and it's uh, like its sole point is printf, the glory of printf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, like I couldn't even imagine that guy says, "Like, first of all, what the hell is printf?" <laughs> I mean, I'm sure, like, half of them are probably like, "What the hell?" But, um, <coughs> buddy. Yeah. All right. Uh, Apparently, uh, my aunt just got here. We're we're going on a trip right after the podcast ends, uh, so that's yeah. gonna be fun. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, so uh, that's the reason why I was looking up Zerthura is I needed to be able to view this PDF on my computer, and uh, uh, Zerthura was the thing that I used. Um, and I read the whole thing on printf. I swear to God, I did. Uh, it, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I did. It's not that long. It's like four or five pages, so it's not as it's not as bad as you think it would be, and it's not. <laughs> It's not as dry as you think it would be either. It, I actually learned quite a bit about printf, uh, <laughs> but I still can't get my head around that somebody actually wrote this thing. I mean, <laughs> it's it, it, it's hilarious. Anyways, um, so that is it for us this time. Uh, coming up next week, uh, we are talking about should native Linux game development be the focus? So I'm assuming we're going to be talking about Steam and the Steam Deck and Proton and all that stuff. So that should be very fun. Make sure you tune all in for that. All that good, interesting gaming stuff. Yeah, we're going back to gaming. We're moving from bash scripting to gaming. <laughs> uh, we're nerds. We're diverse here. Yes. You know? Anyway, so before I go, I should take a moment to thank my current patrons. Uh, Devon Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is fun too. Thank you. Uh, I'm... I'm... <laughs> I... I that was Kell of Devils. Uh, what was his name? And he changed it to Gen 2 is Fun 2 because I know they wanted me to say Gen 2 is Fun 2. Okay. Uh, Marcus Maglin, Donnie Sven, Mitchell, Mr. Fox, Arch Center, American Camp. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next week. See ya. <laughs>